Hey everyone, Ryan Young, Kama Jiu Jitsu. I hope you're doing well. So, a couple of things that I wanted to do. First thing I wanted to kind of talk about our Hawaii camp. It was basically the second camp that we've ever done. We've done seminars, a lot of seminars, but we've never done camps to a big degree. Mostly because camps take a lot more planning. And the reason why is because they they go a week long. And when you go a week long, you're going to need to put a lot of moving parts together. So for us to put this camp together, it took a lot of planning on where we're gonna do it, how many people we could get into it, uh, the costs that were needed to break even on the, on the camp, uh, what was gonna be taught, how many hours were we gonna teach, and the instructors that were gonna teach what. But all that aside, it was a great experience to, to do this one. And this one was much larger than our other one. Our other one, had a couple of few, couple or a few people, but what we did really was we went into uh, our affiliate seminar at uh, Affiliate Academy, not our affiliate seminar. But we went into our affiliate academy, which is Taco Jiu Jitsu in Honolulu, Hawaii. We basically took his academy over and we ran classes the entire week. Uh, though that that class, I mean, what did we do? We did four or five classes uh, throughout the course of a week, and a total of about. 15 hours or so. This time, we did 21 hours of training time. Well, basically, it's just class. It wasn't, we're not like training as in rolling, as in trying to beat each other. It was, we packed a whole bunch of information into this camp so that our, our members or our people who attended could leave with a, with a good bunch of things to take home and work on. Now, uh, we did it in Honolulu again, but we're very open to doing them elsewhere. Perhaps we could do one at your academy. The only thing is that we would just need a place to do it. We need a place where we can take over the school. Basically, we'll run all the classes, well, all the evening classes um, for the time that the academy needs to be in prep, in, in motion. The other thing is that this has to be, we need to have a period of time where we can close uh, to the members who, who, who come in for the camp, right? So this year we had 16 people that came in and registered for the camp. So we took over Taco Jiu Jitsu, so they didn't have their regular classes. And we just went through our, whatever Master Dave went ahead and set up for us to teach. So if this is something that you would like to do, and this is something that you are willing to have us take over your school for a week with the time slots that we need, we'd be more than happy to do it. We'd obviously figure out a way for the school to, to make it worth their while. We know, I, don't, I don't want you guys to uh, feel like you'd be in a situation where you'd only be breaking even or losing money because that's not something that would make it to where you'd want to do this again. But it can be anywhere in the world is what we're thinking. In fact, before we decided on Hawaii, I was looking at Panama, somewhere in Central America, somewhere tropical. But it doesn't have to be that way. It can be anywhere. It, it just comes down to what works for the event. You know how we can we can book it. We can get it all done. Now we're talking about the business side of things. Unfortunately, you know it has to be done this way to make it worth everyone's time and, and expense. So if this is something that you would like to do in your academy, just let us know, and we will see what we can do to put our heads together to get it down. Also, if you want to have one of our black belts come out to visit you. We can do a single class, we can do a seminar, uh, we can do a weekend. Um, in fact, I'm, I'm working on doing most of a week, I think four days at one academy, and I'm gonna be teaching the classes over there. We're, we're willing to do this for the benefit of the jiu-jitsu that we teach, because frankly, there aren't that many people that, teaches, that teach Hicks and Gracie's jiu-jitsu. There just aren't that many. The only way we can get people aware of it is to do what Hickson does and just get out there and show it. And that's what we're, we're gonna do this year if you will have us. So if this is something that works for you, just go ahead and let us know, kamajujitsu at gmail.com, kamajujitsu at gmail.com, or you can hit us on our Facebook pages, kamajujitsu and kamajujitsu Dallas Fort Worth. You can reach us at either, at, at either location. Now, let's go into the topic that I wanted to cover today. And this is in response to a video that I didn't know would be as popular as it's becoming. Um, it's already our number eight, number eight ranked video, uh, uh, you know, for Kama Jiu Jitsu of all our videos. We've done well over 200 of them, and it's been out for maybe a week and a half or so, and it's already our number eight uh, video as far as views. So this comment was sent in response to our want to get better faster in BJJ and Jiu Jitsu. Here it is. And this is from Call Crooked, spelt with K's. 
And let's see, this is kind of long, so let me kind of just kind of go through it here. I totally get what you mean, and it makes a lot of sense. And this is about talking about how you need to focus on techniques that you're working on rather than um, trying to learn a new thing every day. Work on something till you get a command of it before you move on to something else. So he gets it, it makes sense. But how are you supposed to take one technique and train that for a month or whatever if your professor is teaching a new technique each week or even every day of the week? He, the professor, shows you a technique, you drill it with your partner, and then at the end of the class, when you try to apply the technique, you really can't, right? I mean, you try, but it doesn't really work too well. The next day, uh, you go to train, there's another technique. Well, you really didn't learn the one from yesterday, but now he's giving you a new one. And how am I supposed to go back to that initial technique learned the day before and keep training that? Because I would assume that my training partner would notice me doing a totally different technique when drilling with him. Thanks for the video. So you're gonna have to take charge of your own learning. And I hate to put it that way, but really that, that is what it is. Because if your professor has the tendency to always wanna show you new stuff every class, then it's going to be really difficult to be able to, to be able to grasp it to the point of having a great command of it. So in fact, we were talking about in class today and we we're talking about in class today, I was kind of going over, let's say this is uh, the start of a technique and this is the finish of the technique. Now what you want to do is you want to be able to get from point S, the start to the finish, in a straight line, meaning the most efficient way possible with no mistakes. However, oftentimes when you first learn it, you're gonna go this route. It's a lot longer. Or another time that you do it, you're gonna go in this route. You're still ending up in the same spot. But instead of having the shortest, most efficient path to the finish, you're, every time that you try it, it's a different way. It's a different way. But sometimes you don't even finish it. You end up going here and you end up failing. What you wanna do is over time, when you go out far away, find what you did wrong, and narrow it up, and narrow it up to the point where you're going through, going through this way, okay? Now, what'll happen is that you'll keep doing it this way, and as a result, you will always do it that way because you trained it over and over and over again. On the other hand, and this is what I've seen as well, let's say I remember going to watching a practice session with some guys that would get together on a Sunday, and they were practicing arm bars from the guard. And there was no connection, there was no tightness, there's no nothing. They were just simply going through the motion. Their rationale was that they were warming up. But the thing is, it was always like that. They practiced it like this. Well, if you practice it like this and not in a straight line, how do you think you're gonna do it every single time? You're not gonna be very good at it. Why is this a problem? Well, let's say every time you try to do it with somebody who's resisting, they shut you down. They shut you down, they shut you down, they shut you down. So what will eventually happen is you're gonna go, well, I'm gonna get shut down here anyway. There's no sense in me doing it. So then you end up scrapping the whole technique. So all that time that you wasted was time that you could have spent getting good at something else. Now, this happens to a lot of people because, I'll give you an example. It happens a lot with people who, especially smaller people who play guard. You eventually get so, cust uh, so accustomed to playing guard that even when you don't have to play guard, you're playing guard. So you will get good at playing guard, but what if you come across somebody whose guard is better than yours? They'll pass your guard and you'll have nothing else. For, some, for a concept like this, think of the, the other video we did um, about the, the equalizer. That will help you understand that concept somewhat. So according to Carl Kirkett's question, he was wondering how he can possibly focus on anything, being that there is no focus in his school. He's always getting fed new techniques. Basically, he's being fed with, he's, he's, instead of drinking water out of a water fountain, he's drinking out of a fire hose. Now, I did remember that I once had an instructor who thought that that was the way to teach because his rationale was, I'm just gonna give you everything and whatever sticks, meaning whatever you become good at and proficient at, 
he will then build your game around that. That's the way a lot of people teach, and I can't say it's a wrong way to teach. It's just not the way we teach. The way we teach is to take you step by step through every single position of importance and all the need to know stuff, right? I did a video on need to know versus good to know. All the need to know items, and we kind of help you in that we don't let you deviate from those techniques. If I see you doing something different, I will stop you and I'll say, don't do it that way, go back to this way. Okay, and then we'll do it. Basically, it's like a reminder, right? And that's, that's my job and that's the other instructor's job, jobs here, is to make sure that everybody stays on the path because I want everybody to be consistently good at everything. Now, I can't have you distracted by other things, so we'll do this. Now, how can you do it if your school does not have that type of setup? It's relatively easy. Here's what you do. Let's say you're working on passing guard. Then what you're gonna do is, you're gonna try to pass everybody's guard. Even if you're not necessarily in a position to play guard, you're gonna find a way to get yourself to going into that person's guard just so you can pass them. And what that does is this, it actually helps you to get better at getting to that position, passing guard. Because you have to now be creative and figure out how can I get into somebody's guard so I can now pass their guard. You're never gonna avoid somebody's guard because you always wanna pass it. Or let's say you're mounted on somebody, you're gonna give them a lot of space so they can, they can hip escape out and they can put you back in guard so you can pass the guard all over again, right? But let's say sometimes people don't play guard with you. They just don't want to. Maybe in their mind, maybe in their mind they're not playing guard at all. So maybe somebody is always cross-eyed on you or as people call it, side control. Then you're gonna let people go side control on you, you're not gonna fight it, and then you're gonna start to work your escape, work your escape, work your escape, right? It's easy to do it. Nobody really has to know what you're doing if you wanted to kind of keep it to yourself. For a while, there was a period of time when I was a brown belt that what I would do is, once I knew that the purple belts in the, in the school could not pass my guard, I would let, it, I would let myself uh, have a guard that was a little easier to pass. And I wouldn't completely lay down for them, but I would, not make it so hard for them, and I'd give them the path to get the cro uh, to pass my guard to get onto side control. At which point now, I'm working the side control escape. So I'll work the side control, work the side control. Once I get that down, and I know that I can do it, and I'm confident, it doesn't bother me anymore, right? My equalizer lever went up for side control escape. I would let them get straight to mount. I'd block off all, all other options and let them get to mount. And then I'd do the mount escape, do the mount escape, do the mount escape repeatedly. Once I knew I could always get out of their mount, then I would maybe give them my arm. You know, let them loop it. Once they loop it and lock it up, then it's my job to try to get my arm out. They take my arm, I tap, simple. Then what I do is I do it again and again to the point where I know now that they can pass my guard, they get the side control, I can let them come to mount, I can let them have my arm and they can't, they can't make me submit. Once I know they can't make me submit, then I'll let them have a little bit more. But what if there's, a, there's one technique that you want, or there's a few techniques that you want to work but all different positions? Right? Let's say if I'm mounted, I, I wanna work on the, the choke from the mount. Then every time I mount somebody, I will choke them. If I don't mount them, I'm not doing choke from the mount. Uh, let's say, but when I'm playing guard, I wanna do left-handed scissor sweep. Then I'm gonna do nothing else but left-handed scissor sweep, left-handed scissor sweep, so long as I'm playing in the guard, I'm playing guard. Let's say every time I'm near the belly on somebody, I wanna go for an arm bar. Okay, that means that every time I'm playing, I get to knee the belly, it's gonna trigger me to go for the arm bar. That's the easiest way to be able to take your own training into your own hands so that you can get good at what you need to get good at. Because unfortunately, especially in these bigger schools, your professor may or may not even know your name, let alone know your game, let alone know what needs to be done to, to plug all the holes in your game. It's just the way it is. Right? And that's how it is when you go to group classes, right? You know, another plug for private sessions, but that's okay. Most of us, 95 to 98% of us, are going to learn jujitsu in a group class. So that just means you're gonna have to take a little more charge of what you're learning and not necessarily depend on your, depend on your professor so much um, in class. You may pull them aside after class and go, hey, you know, that particular guard pass that you showed, you know, about a week ago, it kind of went like this. This is how I remember it. Can you show it to me again really quick so I can work on it? You think he's gonna tell you don't work on it anymore? He showed it to you, of course he's gonna tell you to work on it. He's gonna say, yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Here, let's do it again. And <clears throat> he may even give you a few pointers on it and maybe answer some questions you might have had. But you're gonna to have to take charge of that. So if that's a guard pass you're doing, don't go to another guard pass when you're, in guard, when you're passing guard. Use that one. You have to, it's all, it's all mental here. You have to tell yourself, 
I'm, I'm going to lock out all other options and I'm going to do what I'm working on. Don't be tempted to go astray. Because if you do, guess what? That's one less rep that that guard pass that you want to work on, that's one less rep that one got to, to experience. So I hope that helped. Please don't think to yourself that this way of teaching is unrealistic. A lot of you, there's a lot of naysayers out there and that's fine. You know, you'll never use it and that's fine with me too. You're giving up on a good, on a good possibility for you to kind of help yourself. But at any rate, you know, not everybody's gonna, not gonna do what, what I suggest and that's fine. But <clears throat> take it onto yourself to think to yourself from every position which you'll possibly be in. Pick one thing, one thing that you wanna work on and every time you get to that position, do it and do it and do it until you know that you can do it whenever you want. It's more important that you have three things that you can do anytime you want rather than 30 things that you can only do 20% of the time. Just my opinion. Anyway, that's all I got for you. Take care and happy training. Bye-bye now.